Welcome back guys sa aking channel. Please don't forget to subscribe. Unlike the video. Guys, panoorin natin guys kung sino pong magaling sa Miss Universe candidate. Thailand po ba or Philippines? So, tara guys. You know when I was a young girl, I used to watch Miss Universe on the television and I thought it's so far, it's so big. I can never get there, but to actually be here right now, knowing that in just a couple of days I'll be on that stage, <laughs> I'm just so incredibly happy and to be representing for my home country, Thailand, I'm just, I'm in awe, I'm in shock, and it's the best feeling in the world, I'm so blessed to be here, and I cannot wait to be on that stage and really perform and make my country proud. First of all, congratulations. How does it feel to you? Thank you. It feels amazing. I cannot believe that I'm here. You know, with the COVID situation, I'm so glad that we're all here and that there's so many girls that are able to be a part of this competition. And what it makes me realize is that the world isn't that big. When you see all the girls in the auditorium together from different countries and everyone is so nice and so lovely, they're so warm. And I can't wait to get to know everyone. And also, it's it's so unique to see that everyone was born into such different cultures, different uh, languages. But we're all here together to tell our stories. And tell me about your journey, your road to getting here. You know? Just your, I know you obviously part of it, but just your journey to getting here. Is it that easy or not? Oh my goodness. The <laughs> Well, Thailand is very far away, that's one thing, and I really had to, it, was a, it wasn't a struggle to get the visa, but it was a, a long process, and when I got the visa, I was very excited, but the journey here, the physical journey, if you can believe it, it's, it was more than 30 hours, all the way from Thailand, yes, so I had to make a stop at Istanbul, and the layover was eight hours there. Oh my goodness, but it was so amazing. I'm so uh, blessed that some of my teams were able to come with me as well, my national directors. So they were there to keep me company, making sure that I'm okay, and you know, giving all the support. And in a world of COVID where you can't have family and friends you know, coming with you, so yes. how important is that support for the family and friends? How important is it to know that you know, people at home are behind you? Oh my, it's, it's absolutely everything. Knowing that you've got that support, it is the motiv motivation that keeps me going every day. Every time I see a message online and they're saying that they're supporting Thailand. And you know, it's so nice to see the nation coming together to support their candidate, to support their representative. And it's just how a, con a country thrives. Because we cannot thrive alone, we have to move forward together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I believe, though, that there are some super fans that did make a big. Can you tell me about those super fans that are just out there? Oh, they are so amazing. Every time I come down, they would be screaming, Thailand, Thailand, Thailand. We came down here at 7.30 in the morning and they're already there. I think they're camping out there. But they've been so supportive and I actually know quite a few of them. Some of them are big YouTubers in Thailand. I flew all the way here just for the competition. But you know pageantry is so big in my home country and it's, it's almost like a national sport. So the whole country gets behind it, they're very supportive, you know, and they're just right behind you. And I just want to say thank you to them for being here. I know that not a lot of people were able to be here, but I want to say thank you because every time I walk down and I hear Thailand, it makes me smile. It puts a smile on my face. I mean, it makes me want to make my day better. I want to go better and I want to go in with 100% to do whatever it takes. Wonderful. Uh, one last question, no, a couple last questions. How, how has it been on the ground? How has you know, the week sort of been unfolding? What is your day-to-day -day like? Give your fans at home and give our viewers a sense of what's 
what is it like here? It is incredible. It's an incredible journey to have been able to meet all of the girls. Because you know when you know of each other online and you've been messaging, you're on WhatsApp, there's a WhatsApp group, you've been talking, but then to actually come here and meet them in reality, it's just a whole different feeling. And it's just so nice to get to know them better and to know their stories because each of them are so inspiring and they're so empowering and they have different stories that make them the woman that they are today and I think it's just unique to get to know them. In some countries, sport is like the national pastime. That's true. In the Philippines, some might say that pageantry is the pastime. That's true. You know what, in the Philippines, we have pageants all over the place. Yes, we have pageants in the barangay, in school, national, local. That's why we really love Miss Universe. It's like it's giving pride and putting the Philippines back on the pedestal. That's why there is an added pressure as a candidate coming from a pageant-loving country. But it's a good pressure. I always look up to our former Miss Universe Philippines. They really did well in the competition. And now this is my time to show who I am, you know, to offer what Rabia can show to the rest of the universe. So I'm very happy um, and at the same time I'm excited to make all my Kababayans proud and hopefully I do. Why do you think it is that the Philippines love pageant? They have appreciation for you. We do love pageant because we, we used to think that my identity as a true Filipina. Tell me about your journey to being found in Miss Philippines. You know, in a world that, in a country I should say, that loves pageants. That must have been a very intense focus. Tell me about your journey to being Miss Philippines. Well, my journey was great. You know what? I started to be a dark horse. Nobody noticed me. Nobody knows I was in the competition up until the preliminary and the coronation night. And when I won, I received different comments, of course. There were people who didn't expect me to do well, who think that I cheated. That's why I, I need to redeem myself in Miss Universe. I really need to do well in this competition. And the thing is, I, I love pressure. I love criticism. I get better every day with that. You tell me I cannot do that. I turn to you and I, I'm going to say that no. I can do it for myself. <laughs> so how does it feel then to be on this noble huh? How do you feel to be here in this month right now? It's crazy, but I'm I'm overwhelmed with the support, not just from the Filipino community, but also from Thailand, um, Latin countries who do appreciate me as a candidate, as a person. It, it motivates me that I am beautiful. I can offer so much in this world and. When somebody believes in you, it gives you that extra energy to really do well and perform well. Do you have a sense with the girls, all of the girls competing, you're competing, but is there a sense of camaraderie with all of the girls? Is there a like, real spirit that, you know, sort of um, motivate each other to do better? You know what, I have a different idea about Miss Universe. I thought it's going to be very competitive, in a healthy way, well of course. But now I can see every girl helping each other from fixing those hairs, from trying to zip up those outfits. It speaks of the closeness and the kind of camaraderie that we want to have. The goal of this universe is not just to crown one girl, but also to build a genuine and long-lasting friendship among us. Would you say within the Miss Universe world that you have two girls, sisterhood, or your sisters? There, there is sisterhood. I can say I was able to talk to different um, representatives from different backgrounds, different cultures. And despite our differences, there's so much to be highlighted in what um, binds us together. And, and that is because we want to empower women. We want to have our advocacies. We want to speak for the things that we love. And that's that's a celebration of women and the beauty that we have. So coming out of this way, obviously you would love to be proud of the Of course. <laughs> and that, that would be wonderful, of course, for any of you. But what else would you take out of this way? What do you think you will feel at the end of this way, regardless of the result? How would you be a different person? 
it's it's the growth and the development that I was able to have during preparing for this dream. I will be honest, there was a moment that I lost my identity because I was put under pressure. I was in that position in which I feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not a good representative of my country, but I was able to bounce back stronger. And if I was able to do that for Miss Universe, I will be able to do that in life. That is my greatest takeaway from Miss Universe. Okay, so Bill brings up huge male fans. Yes. I want you to give us a little bit of a message to the fans here and at heart. But say the message. What would you say to all the fans in the Philippines? To all my fans from the Philippines and from all over the world, maraming salamat po. Thank you so much for loving me and for believing in me. It means a lot to somebody who is so naive in this industry, who has no idea how to become a beauty queen on the first day of my journey. But because of your love and support, I was able to be the woman that I am today. And regardless of the results, I may or I may not win the crown, but one thing is for Thank you for watching. Paalam!